Hello and welcome to the Queendom. I'm Sarah Ingle and today we're going over back to school life hacks. This is me, I'm so royal. School doesn't teach you life hacks, so I'm going to teach you how to hack life. Today we have, whoa, we have a globe. Everybody knows that the, it's very important when you go back to school to have a globe. This is what happens when there's an earthquake. Ask your local seismologist. Please write this on your test. When you cite your sources, you can cite this video. Everything you see on the internet is true. I've gotten really rambly today. I'm not entirely sure why. These are actual life hacks from somebody. I'm like, I'm gonna call myself a pro at school because I finished my master's degree when I was 21. So if there's anything I feel like I'm qualified to talk to you about that's not related to princesses, this will probably be it. I'm gonna go through life hacks that hopefully will be helpful for you. You know, here in the queendom, we've got people of a variety of ages. Population of the queendom is what, over 13K now? We've gotta get that population up though. Um, but the population of the queendom has a variety of ages, and so I wanna make sure this was relevant to everybody. And a lot of these things are things that I've used since <laughs> elementary school all the way through grad school. So you know what, even if you're not in school right now, you could always go back. There's that 90 something year old lady who went back to school, and you know what? She could use some of these life hacks too. So we're gonna jump right into our life hacks, and if you have any additional ones to add, make sure you add those in the comments, or even little ways that we can um, improve upon some of these life hacks. My first tip on the list is for those of you, particularly who are in college, or want to go to college in the future, if you ever notice the price of college is very, very large. And the price of everything that involves college, it's like weddings, what you would is slap like college or university or wedding on something, all of a sudden the price quadruples or even more quintuples, quint multiplies by 10. If you go online and you search for your textbook, you can usually find the international edition of the textbook. And almost always, at least every time I ever did it, it is the exact same book with a different cover that just says not for use in the US because I guess in the US we just wanna charge everybody literally more than 10 times as much for the exact same book with a different cover. And you know what? It's literally so much cheaper that I know a lot of people rent their books or get the ebook. The international editions seriously are still most often cheaper than the ebook or renting it. That's how much cheaper they are. I went to a very, 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 very strict dress code school up until the middle of 10th grade, and that is a story for another time. A lot of schools have like, what is it, the three finger width rule where your, where your, your straps have to be the three finger widths. Easy life hack is you can, you can layer things um, and get something with, with straps that are wider. If there's a particular outfit or a shirt you like, but something about it does not pass your school dress code, there's nothing that says you can't plop that on top of something or um, slip something underneath it. Um, just, you, you can be creative. That way, if there's a favorite shirt you have, but it does not happen to have straps that are this wide. I don't know why the straps this wide versus this wide. I'm really glad I did that with my finger because I almost, didn't. Don't toss out your favorite shirt just because it doesn't happen happen to pass. There's there's a lot of things you can layer on top of things. Skirts, skirts too. You can throw on a pair of leggings on, underneath them if they happen to be too short. The next one on the list is something that can be helpful whether you're in elementary school or in grad school or anywhere in between is color coding things by subject. And I want to show you an example of what I mean by that. And these are like literally the exact type of folders that I used to use and I would put them inside one of those big zip up notebooks. I'm sure you know what I mean, the big zip up notebooks and you could have um, with the three ring binders and you've got English, math, very generic. I feel like once you're out of like sixth grade, it's no longer just math, it's like algebra, calculus, 
geometry, something like that. But we're very generic math here. Slip all of these down in your notebook and you could take them everywhere with you. And then say you go to your English class. You pull out your English little notebook here and you know which one it is because you can see that it's yellow and you see it every day and your brain just remembers yellow equals English. And anytime you have your to-do list, you can either highlight it in yellow, write it in yellow, and it keeps you from forgetting things that have to do with that class. It saves you so much time and it saves you the stress of feeling like you're going to forget something. So color coding is a huge tip that I highly recommend. I always used it. It helps just relieve stress. If you want a less stressful school year, recommend color coding. Alternately, if you're not really into color coding, you can do something similar with washi tape. But washi tape, you can basically do like a pattern coding. Put the same type of washi tape on the cover of a notebook or on anything that you know you need to bring to that class. The next tip is for test taking. There have been a lot of studies that have shown that you remember things better when you are in the place um, where that thing occurred. And you're like, what, what, what does that mean? So basically the part of this that you need to know is if you're able to study in the location where the test will occur, you're more likely to recall the stuff that you studied. So if you have the opportunity, study in the classroom, study where that test is gonna happen because the things around you will trigger your brain, will put it back in that same state of mind to help you remember things when you need to recall them, even when you're in the heat of the moment taking your exams. If you can't study in the same place, there are some other things that you can do to still help put your brain in the same uh, state of mind. Some people say that chewing gum or having something with peppermint in it is, is helpful to stimulate uh, brain activity. I don't know how true that is, but if you study while you're either chewing gum or having a breath mint of some sort that has a very distinct scent and flavor to it, if you're able to then again, while you're taking the exact, ex while you're taking the exam, taking your test, have that same gum, have that same breath mint, it will help um, trigger your brain and put it back in that same place. Anything you can do to make it as close to the environment as possible helps um, your brain recall things. Another tip is to do your homework with your shoes on. And you're gonna be like, what? Why am I gonna do my sh homework with my shoes on? I wanna do my homework where I'm all comfy and cozy. But your brain knows that you are kind of like in work mode uh, when your shoes are on and you're able to focus better because a lot of times when you're at work, at school, the places where you really need to focus and pay attention, your shoes are on and your brain starts to just subconsciously think, okay, shoes are off, that's relaxing time. Make up songs to help you study. You wouldn't believe the things that get stuck in your head. Actually, you would believe the things. You know the stupidest things. You get stuck in your head because it was to a catchy tune. If you can add words to those catchy tunes that help you remember your stuff, why not? I know people make up songs to help people remember presidents, to help people remember states and capitals. Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Indianapolis, Indiana, and Columbus is the capital of Ohio. It sticks. So if there's something you really want to remember, make up a song. If your high school or middle school or elementary school lets you take notes electronically, then you can use this, but I just don't know. I know it differs a lot from school to school, but if your school allows you to take notes electronically, I highly recommend you do that. And I know that some people are like, oh, but writing by hand um, triggers something in your brain to help you remember it. If you really still want to do that, then they make little pens that will actually transcribe what you're writing onto your computer. If you have your notes on your computer, they're now searchable. I still to this day have like all of my notes from college and grad school saved on my computer and they're not taking up all this extra space and if there's something that I need, I can still go search for them. Even your math classes, it makes everything so much more searchable. You can share it between your friends if you need. I just highly, highly recommend 
having, at least in some way, an electronic copy of your notes. Ah, the next tip. <laughs> Even thinking about this makes me feel like I'm gonna go take a test the next day. Just have a one page condensed study guide where you cram as much, even if you're writing like this big, onto one page. Partially because I know like my brain anyways, I can then picture even where on the page it is and it helps you remember. Some teachers even will let you use one page notes. So if you can learn to write really tiny, I find that most of my exams, I could fit really most everything I needed if I wrote really tiny on that one page and then you can like highlight as you need. And then after you have that one page and you feel like you've got most of it down, maybe there's a couple key things that you know like, I really, this is like memorize this, must memorize this or having a really hard time with this and like condense it even further, have like a note card that's like the super duper duper condensed version. I would always look at that one little night card right before I took the exam and put it away and that way I knew I was just looking at the things, I must remember this. The next tip on our list <laughs> will save your back. There, you know there's sometimes where there's not enough time in between your classes to get either back to your dorm if you're in college or back to your locker to get to between and you've got to carry all these books and it, like I'm a little person. I'm seriously lucky I don't have like permanent back problems because of that. If you can just get an electronic copy of the book, <laughs> your back is gonna thank you. Um, your just stress level is gonna thank you because you just remember basically like your iPad or your laptop or whatever you wanna access that on. Your back's happier, your mom's happier because she doesn't have to try and drive you back to school at seven o'clock at night and find someone to let you in because you forgot your book and then you're locked out and you don't wanna flunk your class. That's not, that's not a true story. I would always have a nightmare about forgetting that I had a class. And that actually leads me into my next life hack. When you find your class schedule, if you just print it out or write it out on a little tiny like, thing that you don't have to worry about your phone battery dying or whatever, and you can just slip it somewhere. I mean, this is embarrassing, but I would reference that thing <laughs> way past the beginning of the school year. I don't know why. I just had this like phobia in my head that I was going to forget that I had a class. I forget. I don't know why. It's like a, a fear of mine that I was forget that I was in a specific class and I wouldn't know where to go. <laughs> the next one I have for you is definitely more for probably like middle school, high school age. If you have a teacher who just doesn't like what, what anybody has to wear and just cracks down on everybody for the dress code, the trick with this, if there's something you wanna wear and they know that you, they're, you know they're just gonna have a problem with it and it's only one person and they just have a problem with everything, just bring a hoodie or a sweater. Wear that hoodie or sweater while you're in that class or while you're going by that teacher or while you're in the hallways in between classes and take it off when you get to the classroom. <laughs> Another dress code life hack. Skin tone dance shorts look like skin from afar, but up close, they're not. So if you have a teacher who's like, oh, you're wearing your skirt's too short, you're like, oh, but look, and you're like, snap, and you're like, oh, that's not your skin. If there's some stuff that would just look stupid with layers, just wear something skin toned underneath it and you'll have the same effect. Once you're in college, you can wear literally anything most places, including like pajamas. Another one for my college students, grad school students. Please, oh please, use ratemyprofessor.com. I know sometimes people go on there to vent about professors, but it's a rating system for your professors and you can see which professors like the students love, which ones people don't love, why, read about them before you sign up for your classes and make sure, I mean, this is kind of like an obvious one, I'm not even counting it as a tip, make sure you sign up for classes the moment you possibly can because the longer you wait, the more likely it is you're not going to get the classes you want. In fact, if you know one fills up right away, make a priority list of the classes that you need and sign up for them in that order because like in the seconds that people get in there, classes will fill up. Next tip, if you're not comfortable in heels, do not, no matter how cute it looks with your outfit, wear heels on the first day or even the first week. You're still trying to find where your classes are. You don't wanna be late. You don't want to have to be stressed out about tripping. Just wear something you're comfortable walking in. 
you've got enough stressful things happening. You've got enough things that, to worry about. You don't want to add to your list by worrying about falling down the stairs, tripping, um, or just having really painful feet. Next tip, <laughs> uh, a lot of schools now, especially high schools, are made out of these very concrete buildings that kind of re resemble jails. And you get like no cell phone reception. And by the time you leave the class, like your whole phone battery is drained. If you have a class like that, you should always have your phone on, on silent because you don't want to be in a class where like a professor or a teacher is gonna take it from you. But if you have a class where you know you get no reception, you can put your phone on airplane mode while you're in there and then it won't be constantly searching for a signal and when you leave the class, your phone won't be dead. One of the best ways to learn something is to teach it to somebody else. Highly recommend. If there's something that you struggle with, try and get a study buddy not to have that friend teach it to you, but you can try and learn it to teach it to them. Trying to teach something to someone else lets you think through it in a different way and also shows you what steps you don't fully understand because you're not gonna be able to explain it to someone else until you fully grasp it yourself. We only have a couple left here and one of my biggest ones that I wish, like especially younger me, someone would have just told me, I don't even know if it's a life hack or just flat out advice, is please, oh please, ask questions. I never wanted to bother my teachers or feel like I sounded stupid for, for asking a question, but no, if you have a question, ask the teacher. Nobody's going to think you're stupid for asking that because I guarantee you, you're not the only one thinking it. Everyone will probably be relieved that you asked it. But if you flunk your test, people are gonna think you're stupid and you flunked your test because you wouldn't ask a question about something you didn't understand. The last life hack I have for you is focusing your time where it matters. And that includes something that happens a lot here on YouTube. Don't fall into the DIY trap. There's so many channels that have you DIYing things that are not helpful. You can buy things that are better for literally cheaper than it's gonna cost you to make it. And you're just wasting your time trying to create like, <laughs> what is it, the chair out of, out of jeans or something stupid like that. It, probably more than half of this, the back to school DIYs you'll see are going to cost more than some, buying something that works better and looks cuter at the store. So before you go out and try like the crazy DIYs, there's some DIYs out there are great. Please do those, but just be conscious about it. Make sure you're not trying to just for the sake of DIYs. And I know I say this because I do a lot of DIYs on my channel. Um, be smart about the ones you use. There we have it. We have a whole bunch of life hacks that I hope you can use as you are going back to school. I hope that they're helpful for you. Please leave your life hacks, your tips and tricks for going back to school in the comments below. I wanna read them. We all wanna read them. We wanna comment on them together and help each other get through the school year in a way that's that'll make it fun, exciting, and less stressful for everyone involved. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this um, and ring the little bell if you actually wanna see them and have YouTube actually tell you when they come up. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time and happy back to, to school. Um, there's nothing behind me. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> search through them and like just Eep. we're filming we're doing we're finishing up the get back to school no <laughs> that's not so aggressive get back to school you little munchkins <laughs>